Hello everyone. Today we're going to build this great tank that you can use to explore the depths, mine Zonite, and take out any of the silver enemies with this pulsed laser setup and cannon. To start, we're going to go to this Aduan light route, and there'll be a Yiga hideout to the east of there, and that's where we'll find the tank base. You want to look around the perimeter for a tank structure, and it's got headlights in the front. It's going to be on the outside of the wall, and I can see the headlights now. So there's our tank base. So we need to take out the soldier, and then save it to our auto build. So it's got three wheels, it's got spikes. This metal base of it is only three zonite, which is great. Add an apple. You can just pick up the apple. And then we will go to get our next part. So I teleported to the top of Death Mountain at that shrine. So from here, we're going to go to the Elden Great Bridge. Or Bridge of Elden. there'll be a couple different minecart shapes and you want to grab the big one although it is attached to a smaller one so what you have to do is attach an apple or something to it to save it to your auto build and then you'll be able to separate the two minecarts with auto build our next stop is the Gemma Mix shrine to get the electric motor once inside you can fuse it to a shield and then we will take it apart at Terrytown later our last stop is going to be the Sky Island, or any of them that have a Flux 3 construct. I usually will teleport up here to the Great Sky Island and then paraglide around to the right. Lake Hylia, and it's just above my paraglider in the shot now, although it's hard to see. So we will quick beat this construct for its core. You can use bone proficiency to and give no bones with a multi-shot bow for a quick takeout. And then we will fuse the core to our shield. At Terrytown. We're going to come over here to Pelison, and we're going to take the motor and the core off of our two shields so that we can build with them. I've taken out all the parts besides the auto-built ones. So we have our three big wheels, steering stick, and then the back left we have the motor, core, stake, and electric or shock emitter, and then the turret on the right has two construct heads, a cannon, and however beams that you want. You can take out two lights to initially build the, the Yiga structure because it includes two lights if you don't want to waste the zonite and I don't use lights for anything so might as well just take them out and use them for this. Take out a couple apples because those are a part of your auto build structure. We'll start with the base. So this is the Yiga structure and we see that with all of the zonite parts it only costs three zonite. back and move the steering stick. I noticed that inside this area the camera likes to clip inside of the space instead of allowing you to see around the tank so to help that moving the steering stick near the back corner seems to help. And it's going to be one of those things where you just move it around slightly and see if the result is good or not and you'll have to try a couple times. We can remove the lights and get rid of them. You could just use a bright bloom seat on the front and it'll do a better job than the lights will. And next we will make the minecart. And I've noticed that 
It does cost 6 Zonai, but only this once. And even when you build it, the second minecart just disappears. So you don't have to even try to get rid of it. Now we're going to place it on the back here. And the general placement that I found to be pretty good is to find a center snap point in the front. So you want to get it down as far as you can so that the sides are basically touching the base. And then you want to look for that center snap point. It'll be where the front is touching the spikes. So, see it right there. And there, it's attached to the spikes. And now let's check if we can get in. You have to get on top of the wheel and then perhaps crouch to see the control. And the placement of the steering stick will help this process. So you see there, I can get in, and then you clip through the gap between the cart and the base. But see how the camera clipped in, so my steering stick placement is not the best. So I'll use Ascend to leave, and then I'm going to work on the steering stick. So we'll place the steering stick in the back corner, and then check it out. And we see that I don't even have to crouch to see the control icon pop up and the camera doesn't pan in, so this is a much better placement. <laughs> now we're going to put the core onto the electric motor. And this one's a little challenging, you'll have to try a few times. And check the link in the description for an explanation on how to do it. But you want to look at the green shadow on the bottom and try and get the hole in the middle lined up with the motor, but it's not completely accurate to where the center is, so you'll just have to place it, turn on the electricity, see if the structure wobbles as it spins, and then keep placing it in different spots until you see that it doesn't wobble. Now on that one, I can clearly see it was not centered, so I'm going to try again. And we see that it wobbles. You want the corners of the construct to line up with the corners on the top of the motor. Here we'll place it. This looks like it might be good. Check. Not good at all. But I can at least see which direction I should move it. Wobbles a little bit. I'm gonna say it's good for now, just in this demonstration I'm showing you, but you all can take a few more tries to get it more centered. So from this point, we're gonna attach to the front. Horizontally like this. And I see that I wanna move my stake maybe a little bit further forward towards the rear of the vehicle. Because I want this just in front of the front wheel, otherwise it puts a lot of torque on the front and probably will start hitting the ground. And we want to line up the flux core to be right in front of the wheel because that'll be the middle of the vehicle and that'll be where we aim while we hit the zonite deposits. So that looks pretty good. And now we'll add the shock emitter and test it out. Great, we see that it spins right in front of the wheel. To make the pulse laser, I recommend checking the link in the description again for Evan the Bouncy's tutorial on how to make this. But you put one construct head upside down, centered on near the back of the base construct head. Attach the cannon to the base construct head so that's always active, and then attach the beams to the head of the top construct head so that they get pulsed. And that's because I guess the base construct head slightly obscures the vision of the top one so it only activates occasionally and that's what creates the pulses. 
And there we go, we have our completed Depths tank that can mine Zonite and has great weapons on the top and keeps Link completely safe from explosions and enemies. So let's go test it out. I came out here to the Wrist Peninsula because there's usually lots of Zonite deposits and a few Bacoblins and lots of those little... I don't remember what they're called. Those little enemies. I'm going to build it completely from auto build, so let's see how many parts it is. And I only added one beam emitter on the top. If you add eight, of course, there's going to be a lot more Zonite involved. But the way that we built it, it's just 42 Zonite, which is actually pretty great. Alright, we get in, and we'll see how the weapons do. That's actually pretty excellent uh, pulsing. You want it to pulse as quick as possible because that will do the most damage. If the pulse is continuous, it'll do one tick of damage per second. So if you can pulse it quicker than one pulse per second, then you'll be doing more damage than just a regular beam emitter. Now, I came here the last Blood Moon, and I don't think there's been enough time that passed in game for the Zonite to respawn. So we don't get a demonstration of how the Flux core will take apart the Zonite, but we do get a good demonstration of how the weapons work. That also just showed you that the if you accidentally hit something in front, it's not going to just tear off the flux core or the electric motor. It is pretty stable, which is really good, because it's easy to accidentally run into things. So we're going to come up on some bacoblins up here, but I think I'm going to end the video here. The pulsing is really great and it works well with the cannon because if the beam isn't always active then the cannon is much less likely to hit the beams. And with that, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.